Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Suzerain, a not really new political and choose-your-own-adventure sort of role-playing game, but a game that had a major update recently, which added a ton of new content, including everything you saw in the last video around the Gasham headquarters incident, which was a riot that just occurred at a major gas production company where we were making a visit to the leadership there, we invested in the company, and on the way out, uh, there was a riot that uh, threatened to overwhelm our motorcade. Our driver came in, his name is Serge, beat the crap out of someone who was making a lunge for the president and then drove over protesters to get us out of there. So that episode felt like it was fitting in with my uh, with my ethos or my, my goal in this series of being a little bit more evil, but uh, we'll see how things play out going forward. That being said, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Please leave your thoughts about them down below. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right back into this. We'll pick this thing up right where we left off. Serge Walker, the working class hero. Wow, okay. He's in the radical. They don't like me usually. A recent incident where an individual lunged at the president brought an unexpected hero to the fore, Serge Walker. A bodyguard and a driver by profession, Faulkner risked his life to protect the president, reminding us of the working class's role in keeping this country running. Faulkner, a true representative of the working class, stands in stark contrast to the privileged Anton Rain, highlighting the deep divide between the haves and the have-nots in Swordland. <laughs> Little do you know I gave Serge's family education. Swordland's government large-scale investment in Gasham has ignited a wave of criticism. Detractors argue that throwing money at a systemic issue plaguing the sector is far from a viable solution. The strategy, rather than addressing the root of the problem, raises questions about the government's economic vision and future of our energy industry. Okay. Sounding more like a tropical president, I guess. Maybe. The Stability Order of 1954. In order to stop the operation of the destabilizing youth organizations. An investigation on the influence of the Young Swords and Red Youth Organization on the post-assassination unrest has concluded. Both organizations haven't officially organized or called for illegal actions, but several low to mid-level leaders from both have links to insightful actions that led to deaths, injuries, and instability. This allows us to ban the organizations. Ban the Red Youth! I feel like the Red Youth has been responsible for quite a lot of the problems. Just saying. They just tried to kill me. Ban the Red Youth. What was that pop up on the left? Did it say stability decrease? Is there a way to see that stuff? Oh, stability decree. Never mind. We have one good thing currently active stimulus checks. Listen, the, the fucker attacked me. What do you want me to do? I'm sorry, but you, you red youth attack me. You get to get banned. Straight to Gulag. What's the radical got to say about it? Rain bans red youth. Today, in a shocking announcement, the president of Swordland decided to ban the red youth, one of our oldest political youth organizations, which support the foundation of the Republic and fought against the authoritarian generals of the Civil War. President Rain claimed there was enough evidence following the state investigation to ban the political organization from operating in the country. Isn't the fact that an assassination by Young Swords member, which started this mess, proof enough? This vicious cycle of restricting political freedoms will never stop if we look at the root cause of our societal problems. There's ver uh, there are varied opinions in the radical, and most of our readers know that we often take a more humanist, social, and left-leaning angle in our news. But we never would call for a total ban of young, the young swords. Top-down decisions like these aren't the solution. The members of the organizations need to resort to dialogue and exchange. Taking another voice out of the political spectrum and letting others dominate will only increase tensions inside our society, not temper them. I don't know. 
Red Youth tried to attack me. Red Youth gets banned. Simple as that, guys. Upon receiving the order, thousands of police officers conducted cease and desist operations against the Red Youth. Our forces closed hundreds of organizational offices and affiliated businesses all around the country. Additional judges have been ordered to block all bank accounts and to freeze all assets. Dozens of peaceful protests from the members of the organization were forcefully dispersed. One shootout in Lock Haven has lightly wounded two officers who are being treated in the hospital. Most of the organizational capacity of the entity has ceased, but cleanup operations continue. All remaining elements from the Red Youth resisting the order are now being considered as violating the law and under arrest. Well, I finally did a dictatorial thing, I guess. I did a dictator, guys! I did a dictator! Uh, Gruny Reg Regeneration and Ecological Economic Nurturing Act. The green, the green has been proposed by the Assembly aiming to encourage a more sustainable approach to industry in Gruny. Section 1 of this act would impose stricter regulations on industrial pollution and waste disposal, particularly in the Gruny region. That's not even... Is Gasom even here? My concern is Gasom. We just invested in them, so... Tax breaks to businesses that can demonstrate a significant reduction in their environmental impact over a period of time. Small investment fund is created for eco-friendly business practices. Nope. Veto. We just invested in an oil company. Do you really think I'm going to support environmental protections? I was walking to my office since today was the day to edit and make final changes to the proposed constitution of Swordland. The reform committee finally bore tangible results and the draft of the changes were about to be presented. I walked in the marble corridors of the palace thinking about the massive steps we were about to take. My secretary, Livia, greeted me at the entrance to my office. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Livia. How are you today, sir? I feel better now that I've seen you, Livia. She averted her eyes away from me and smiled. Thank you, Mr. President. She paused before taking my coat. It looked like she had something on her mind. Mr. Rain, can you give me a hint about your reform plans? If you ask me, taking away the judge's immunity is long overdue, but it might anger a lot of people in these halls. I'll take that into consideration. I hope you keep me informed. I'll take your coat now. Livia left to hang up my coat. I entered my office and sat down. Not long after Peter and Lucien arrived. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Time to finally get this proposal going. Peter placed the draft in front of me. After your modifications, we'll be starting the process, sir. Can we go over each of the points that are in the discussion of the draft? Well, apart from the first two sections decreasing the Supreme Court's authority and limiting the presidential vetoes, other sections are up for debate. We can start talking about Section 3. This is about the impeachment process of the president. Currently, in cases of high treason and breaking the Constitution, the Supreme Court may impeach and try the president. We could try to make the impeachment process more difficult or entirely get rid of it. A change like that would give you free reign. However, that might be going a little too far. This law is particularly dangerous for you in this case. We'll be going against the old guard, and if we prove to be successful in the assembly, they'll be looking for anything they can declare unconstitutional to tackle you. All they need is the Supreme Court to impeach you. What if we don't succeed? The court can have me impeached for this. Yes, they're already trying to hit you since, you're some, uh, since they are expecting reforms, but we aim to cooperate with some of the judges to make sure that doesn't happen. Move on to section four. This is regarding the appointment of ministers. Currently, the president is free to appoint anybody from the members of the assembly. Nobody else is involved with the process. So there's no reason to change this unless you want to sell this to the opposing parties. Sharing the power with the assembly may make them sympathetic to you. This might be important for the NFP as well. We could introduce a confidence vote. That's not a bad idea. As long as we're the majority in the assembly, it doesn't change much. I'm sure some of the reformists may support that. The fifth section is about our infamous electoral threshold. Most reformists want to lower the threshold as much as possible. We could try working with them, but it's simpler to keep the law. Yes, but this delicate this is a delicate matter. The party, and I mean not even Albin, wants to, us to change the threshold. They think that this will destroy our party in the long term. 
Not wrong. The 10% threshold is what allowed us to control half the assembly with around one third of the majority in the elections. Do you think it really hurt the party? A decrease would definitely hurt our position in the future. If another party is elected to the assembly, our projected vote would be closer to the real vote, which is significantly less. Two major parties, the Communist Party of Sorderland and the Workers' Party of Blutia, both have close to 10% of the election last year. Decreasing the threshold might mean opening their way into the assembly. An increase, on the other hand, is more complex. NFP could be out of the assembly, but that would mean PFJP seats would get higher too. If we're left with only two parties in the assembly. We should keep using the threshold to our advantage. I agree, sir. You have some time to think about your decision, sir. We're at the sixth. This is about the presidential decrees. You already know that the reformists want to be removed or limited, but I'm guessing you don't want any changes to your already powerful decrees, sir. We could try and balance it with the reformists and make it dependent on an enabling act from the assembly. Sure, it would make the whole process longer, but as long as we have majority, nothing really changes. Enabling acts, like that's literally the Nazism. Uh, enabling acts, why the hell not? Uh-oh. Tarkin's soul governed for 20 years. It seems his magic is slowly vanishing from the minds of the people. They believe in term limits are necessary. But of course, I don't. Uh, it's the question about the immu immunity of the judges. While the anti-old guard sentiment is increasing, there are talks uh, that taking away their immunity would give us authority over the ju judiciary. I will instead give the president the ability to replace judges as necessary. <laughs> That'll never pass. How would we even pass it, though? Okay, so Saul. Let's respect this law. Okay, so presidential veto, blah, blah, blah. Limit vetoes, three-fifths majority can override. Limit but establish a pocket veto loophole. Three-fifths majority, that would be 
Like if the whole party was against me almost. That's almost two thirds, not quite. The president may not be impeached. Confidence vote is required. We'll do that. Do not change. Decrees require an enabling act. Do not change. No term limits. Sorry. I don't feel like the justices are going to... Oh, justices may be impeached by the assembly. Why would they agree to that? They're already losing their vetoes, so we don't. I don't think we need to change that. Although I guess, can they? What did we do for impeachment of me? I did. President may not be impeached. So if they can't impeach me, then there's no need. No need to change that. Uh, do not change. Yep. Okay. The fact that I can't be impeached feels like we're going to lose. Mr. Vector said Ms. Tory will probably be easier to persuade. We'll need to unite the party under these changes so her support will be vital. Mr. Calvin will be tougher to break. The problem is that he can also influence the moderates against this. As much as I don't want to say this, if they make any demands to change the proposal, you may need to give in. Thanks for the advice. Okay. Meeting on Energy Production Act of 32. Dinner with business council members. Yeah, let's do dinner with the business council members. We were in Lock Haven to work with the business council to assess weakness in the economy. Simon organized a dinner with the affluent economic figurehead of Swordland. When we arrived, the streets were bustling with activity, even though the atmosphere in the country was tense. Lock Haveners didn't seem very worried. Together with Walter Tusk, Edith Agnock, Milken Avon, and Simon Hall, we entered the renovated, renowned Astari restaurant by the coast. A short blonde man whose embroiled pocket red manager greeted us and waved his arms in excitement as he told us how pleased he was to have us in the establishment. Beaming with pride, he led us to a private room and got us seated at a large table covered for the occasion with a maroon tablecloth. We're quickly served uh, by a group of servers. Walter spoke as they started taking our orders. I recommend the Lockhaven salmon of this place. President, I know that you are from Lockhaven, but I bet you haven't tasted anything like this before. What is the significance of ordering rice versus salad? Indeed, sir, it's an honor to dine with you. It is great to be here with members of the business council. We should thank Simon for organizing this meeting. No need for that. I hope everybody enjoys the evening. Mr. President, 
Looks amazing. Well, it tastes even better. Best of Lespasia, the Chateau de Falanco, 1934. Simone poured some wine in my glass and waited for me to taste it before filling it up. I took a sip. The taste of the wine was immediately stimulating and delightful to my palate. It immediately reminded me of our visits to my father's vineyard when I was a little kid. The wine's sweet and bitter flavors exploded in my mouth. Explode in your mouth! The aroma of gooseberries and lilacs tumbled across my tongue, and my mouth tinged with them long after I swallowed. It tastes like heaven. Reminds me of my father's vineyard. I've heard that he was a big wine connoisseur. May he rest in peace. Thank you. After filling everybody's glass, Simon stood and raised his glass. I'd like to raise a toast to all of you here today. We're meeting here to tonight in difficult times. I believe that with hard work and cooperation and trust, we will get through this period as well. I'd like to thank Mr. Rain again for his decisiveness when it comes to economic policies. I'm sure we will stop this recession. I also thank Mr. Tusk for being here today with us. His presence is an honor. And of course, thank you, everybody. Everybody, thank you. You are all so great. I love you all. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So how did you find the food of the best fine dining restaurant in Lockhaven, Mr. President? Chef must be tipped. I don't have any personal money to tip him. Fine food is like fine art, but this particular one is a masterpiece. There is an art in everything. The art of making money, food, wine, and love. How are things going in the Maroon Palace? The pressure must have increased after you attended that funeral. It did, but it was the right decision. Arcasia knows the right way of doing business. Their approach to the world is real and raw. I'd prefer that cutthroat approach in comparison to niceties. Well, I mean, it's a nice country to visit, too. I've traveled there often on business trips. All countries are nice to visit if you have the cash. Exactly. How about the people who don't have extra cash to spend? What about disease? What about death? What about everything that is wrong with the world? These are matters beyond our lives. We should focus on the betterment of ourselves and enjoy what we have instead of worrying about what others don't have. I must ban this fool. But I'm not in the moderator mode. Damn it. I had a moment, better. It's better. How do I? God. I don't even remember how to... What the hell? Band. Okay. Back to our dinner. Um, um. 
old men plant trees whose shade they shall never sit under. An idealist at heart. You know what they say, being a romantic idealist is easy when you have time and money to be able to just sit down and relax and dream. Walter is taking us down the rabbit hole again. By the way, I saw the Underhill construction has already started with the highway construction. Hopefully that project will bring new investment for Magnolia. The mood is already becoming positive. I have to congratulate Mr. Rain for starting such a massive project. I hope the investment returns will be great. We all hope so, Mr. President, but I think it'll work out. Mr. Hole deserves credit, of course. Our great economic minister. Is there a joke coming? Why? I thought you were said you were great at economy. I've heard that you brought a new b villa, Simone. I don't comment on rumors, but I'll make an exception since we're amongst friends. It is true. Where's the property? It's a small seaside villa at the outskirts of Corinth. Just a modest house with a swimming pool and a small golf course. The property. Small golf course. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Modest, are you being sarcastic with me? No, is there a problem? Oh, come on, leave the man be, President. Come on, let's not talk about finance or politics for now. We came here to relax. Isn't that right, gentlemen? So, Mr. Rain, why don't you tell us what's behind that strong character of yours? I've heard your father was a very wealthy man. Would you say that it contributed a lot to your success? It certainly helped. Money opened a lot of doors. Of course it did. What quite a question is that, Edith? I never met your family, Mr. President. How are they doing, if you don't mind me asking? We don't talk much since I became president. Um, we have no problems. My dad's dead, isn't he? I don't know. We don't talk much. Family is everything. My advice would be to make sure that Frank has a solid relationship with you. He is your future, after all. I'm trying to be as good of a father to him. He seems somewhat introverted. Well, that rascal didn't even ask for permission to use the yacht, and he took it. He basically stole it. Good news is that I finally convinced him to go to university. He'll study economics in Lockhaven Business School. That's a good choice. Having a degree in Swordland separates you from the rabble. We especially need more people who understand economics. Maybe your son will be a great future economist. I wouldn't count on that, but I agree that we need more economists to enter politics. Thankfully, we have a president who seems to be as well-versed in economics as Alfonso very confident in your abilities to fix our recession. Thank you. I hope we can repair the damages to our economy. We can't fail like Alfonso did. A correction, it wasn't his policies that destroyed him, it was the old guard. I always had a gut feeling about his sudden fall. He threatened their economic power base over the country throughout the vast privatization plan. They removed him and backed you after. Walter, stop with the conspiracy theories. I think we've had enough drinks. After a long silence followed by some chit-chat, Walter ordered a bottle of whiskey. That's one good-looking bottle. Toast! To an equal society without class differences, a Morgana Vescor. <laughs> I don't know if that'll uh, that'll fit the uh, the mood. To health and happiness. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for joining us, and you, Saman, for putting this all together. Thank you, Edith, for joining with a bunch of ugly rich men. <laughs> uh, President, a moment alone, please. 
Usually the Lothberg spokesman doesn't directly comment on admin the administration, but I'd like to say a few things since this was a special evening. I'm all ears. It seems you've decided to tackle the old guard and the new and the new constitution. That is brave indeed. We could be a strong ally in breaking up the status quo if you fulfill our requests. We can help with the assembly and perhaps the court. The consensus is that we see eye to eye in the economic direction you have taken by promoting the market economy. I'm interested to collaborate in our future shared interest. Then we have the right attitude. You rejected our previous discreet offer to pick Underhill Construction for executing the first mega infrastructure project. However, you still made the right choice. The party not getting the donation is unfortunate, though. Why someone wouldn't want that money is beyond me. We're aware of the upcoming tax meeting, and it would be a step in the right direction if private corporations would get a tax cut. To boost the economy with job creation, of course, and the positive side effects would be our support to the administration throughout the entire term. I'll, pro I'll give large private corporations a tax reduction. Oh, the economy's not doing great. Hmm... Huh. Um, I will make my decisions objectively. Maybe we can. I'll see what I can do. Did this just commit me to a bri? I'm not really sure. The group wants a private corporation tax cut and a privatization in healthcare and education. I will give private corporations tax and enable privatization. That's too much of an ask. On third thought, I have to reject. Oh. I don't really want to privatize education. I also don't want to, like, get embroiled and impeached. I promise a tax cut. I'll do that. Sure. I've got the media on my side, right? I don't know if that was a big mistake. I guess there's nothing on paper proving I agreed to it, right? Car bomb attack in Avery? Oh. Bill on the rights of workers being drafted. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Let's see what the uh, meeting on the Energy Protection Act bring. Good morning to you, Mr. President. I trust I'm not imposing by arriving ahead of schedule. Not all, not at all, David. On the contrary, we've now got an extra few minutes to strategize before the meeting. Relieved to hear that, Anton. I departed earlier. For my appointment nowadays, as the state of the capital has become more of a challenge than I would like to admit. It's nothing to be ashamed of, David. Would you like some coffee or tea? 
I've already had my tea today, as per my doctor's advice. She suggests chamomile in the morning and sage tea in the evening for optimal health. Listening to doctors does bring me some comfort. It feels as though my throat has been refreshed thanks to her. His gaze drifted, locking onto something beyond the window. A colossal zeppelin traversed the sky below the maroon district. For a fleeting moment, it blotted out the sun before gently veering to the left, lighting a flood of let, letting light flood the office once more. I still remember the first airship in Swordland. We purchased them from Quinali after the war during the birth of what Seoul called the Second Republic. Our infrastructure lay in ruins, and those zeppelins offered a much-needed lifeline, a chance to traverse and rebuild. And then, thanks to our research council's diligent efforts, we started manufacturing our own Dengel sword. It's fascinating to think how much we depend on foreign help after the war. We've come a long way since then. We were in this, a desperate state then, but remember, it is often in our darkest hours that we find the strength to rise again. Our resilience on others was temporary, a stepping stone toward the self-sufficiency we achieved with the National Autark Plan. Even though it had its downsides, I still consider it a success. A pause fell over the room. David's glance landed on the portrait of Tarkin's soul hanging in the presidential office. His eyes lingered on the stern face of the old leader. A sigh escaped his lips. Now when I think of the EPA, my mind is carried back to the formative years of post-Civil War Holsort in the 1930s. The debates, the passion, the potential for transformation, it was a time of renewed optimism. It is our duty now to learn from the past and strive for a better future. What appalled us back then wouldn't apply to us now, or what applied to us then wouldn't apply now. We can see why the Energy Protection Act was so crucial at the time. We had to safeguard our energy sector from foreign interference, especially in the context of post-Civil War economic situation. Uh, helps secure the sector, remain under control, limiting extent of ownership of the foreign powers, such as Rumberg or Lespasia. Despite the controversies, it was crucial that made our recovery. In the end, okay. I know you were just a student of the Dyer University. Those experiences shaped me, and they continue to shape my decisions as president. Swordland wouldn't be what it was today without your father. Blah, blah, blah. His EPA amendment, for example, were severe departure from the Seoul's National Autarky Plan. EPA has its roots in a different era. While some of its principles still may still hold, we may not shy away from revising it in light of our current needs and challenges. Good morning, Mr. President. David, I trust the discussion is progressing well. Leals followed closely behind. She walked with an air of calm authority, her gaze sweeping across the room. Gentlemen, I hope I'm not interrupting anything crucial. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see you all here. We have some important discussions on the agenda today, particularly concerning the Energy Protection Act. Today, we have the opportunity to shape the economic strategy of Swordland for decades to come. The EPA has long stood as a key contention and debate point of the National Autarky Plan. The matter is a discussion of how, or a discussion of how Swordland sees itself and how we position ourselves in the world. Our nation has taken very different economic approaches in the last four decades. Mr. President has decided to lean on promoting a market economy, which should give us clear a clear indicator. Should we decide to increase the EPA threshold to 49% or eliminate it entirely, 
could spark an influx of foreign investment. Given our current economic predicament, this would be a significant boost. Promoting a market economy does not inherently translate to prosperity for all. It can lead to a concentration of wealth with the rich getting richer, while the middle and working class struggle. We need to ensure that the benefits of economic growth are shared equitably along all layers of sort of society. Um. So we return to the subject of the EPA. Our current version of the Energy Protection Act dates back to 1949. President Alfonso's amendment raised the cap on foreign investments in Swedish energy companies up to 20%. In my view, it was a necessary step to attract foreign investment and stimulate our economy. We must remember that Swordland was facing an economic crisis during its tenure. Uh, okay. But did, it in- did the increased foreign ownership actually lead to substantial economic growth? While the increase in foreign ownership alone didn't lead to a drastic upturn in economic growth, it did have a positive effect. It facilitated foreign investment and provided our industries with much-needed capital. The effects of such policy change changes often take time to fully manifest, but they laid the groundwork for future economic development. The Assembly has spoken on the matter, and it stands the Energy Protection Act of 1932 will not be repealed. It is clear that our co- colleagues have re- recognized the potential risks of exposing our energy sector to foreign ownership. While this doesn't end the debate, it does underline the importance of respecting our Assembly's decision. I don't need to respect the Assembly's decision. I wholeheartedly support it. Fair point. So... I wholeheartedly support it. change anything. Increase foreign investment, we could potentially see a decrease in energy prices. We should also consider the potential impact on job security and national control of our energy sector. Okay. So that was a useless question. Nothing changed. National security risks are significant foreign entities could use their stake in our energy sector as leverage in diplomatic or economic negotiations. How the Energy Protection Act changes impact corporations like Gasom? I believe you already know the answer to that, Mr. President. Gasom could fall under foreign control just like any other energy corporation.
Considering the potential foreign buyers such as Quinal, Rizia, Anarcha, Rumburg, and Laspasia, what are the worst case scenarios if they gain control over our hydroelectric gas oil sectors? Of our gas industry lies in our hands, not in anyone else's. Our full investment in gas um, is a testament to our resolve. Our administration needs to protect the jobs of gas um, workers, and this investment ensures that. I have little interest beyond this. The investment signifies our commitment to Sordland's energy independence. Let us put our resources to work for the Sordish people. Reduction in the EPA could prove, pave the way for potential profits from shares, whereas total removal may invite an unpredictable rush for the remaining 45%. Remove the energy entirely our 30 percent investment could potentially be overshadowed by foreign investors however it could also maximize the returns if the foreign investments flood in by increasing the foreign ownership threshold to 49 percent we're opening up more opportunities for foreign investment we'll keep foreign or in threshold the same we're living for Let's just keep it as is. decisions. Okay, so we're not gonna remove the EPA. We're not. Keep it at 20%. Thank you, Olivia. Coffee for me, please. Okay. Oh, 
Wait, I didn't think we were doing tax discussions right now. is our legacy let's make sure that swordling can be proud of thank you all of your in blah 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 for the good of swordland with that being said guys we're gonna go ahead and jump in here and wrap this up i was getting a little bit tired toward the end of this episode so apologies for that still i hope it was an enjoyable look at suzerain 2.0 the is it the amendment update uh, for this game. I'm really excited for the DLC. We'll definitely be playing the DLC on this channel when it comes out. But with further, without any further delay or or, um, or yimmer yammering, I'm going to wrap this up here. So as always, leave your thoughts down below and without further ado, until I've said that like three times in this episode. Uh, but uh, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you very much for watching and until next time, I'm out. <laughs>